What's up guys? We are back with another Legions review, but it's not Mythic Legions. The day has finally come and we finally have Cosmic Legions. So we are taking a look at the first Cosmic Legions Wave 1 figure on the channel and it has to be the big boy. We're going to take a look at High Warden Slog. I've just been enamored with this big green meatball ever since he was first shown. So he gets top billing uh, when it comes to these reviews. I'm going to take a look at all of them, but he's, he's going to go first. Now, outside of the fact that these are, of course, you know, legions, but a different line for legions, one of the big changes is that they all have boxes now. They're not in just clamshell packages that kind of slip out of, out of a tray. These guys get the full-on box treatment, and I really, really like these packages. They are just incredibly different and have a ton, a ton of artwork and just design about them. Now, the figures uh, all come in different shapes and size boxes based on how big they are. Slog gets the big one. So you got them there in the window. Uh, we've got the Cosmic Legions logo down there. You've got this sort of hologram look of and down there as well. One spine gives you a bio as well as what faction he is a part of. The other spine uh, gives you a write-up of Haval Qatar Book 1. And then the back of the box gives us full cross-sell for all of this particular wave. So yeah, I'm a big fan of these packages. Uh, I'm not necessarily, you know, gonna keep all these boxes, but I do like the presentation. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package for the first time, a Cosmic Legions figure, our High Warden Slog, easily one of my most anticipated figures in this wave, in this line. A lot of it is just due to the fact that he's so weird looking. That always draws me in. He's a big, fat, chunky neon green alien in this big massive you know biomechanical suit kind of thing he looks like a big you know blob meatball kind of guy there's a lot to just soak in with this figure he's also you know it's it's goes without saying he's also kind of unique right he is not like any other figure in this wave and that goes for a lot of figures in this wave there's a lot of uniqueness amongst figures in wave one but Slog still kind of stands apart because there's nobody else like him, period. He also has slightly different articulation schemes as a result of just being, well, whatever he is. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. I'm going to move the fishbowl off to start so we can get at this noggin because the head's probably the most interesting aspect of what he can and can't do. He's kind of normal in many ways below the neck if he has one, but the head is pretty weird. So it's a plate that sits sort of on a ball peg. I guess there's got to be a big ball peg down in here. And then there's this giant peg that the actual head just sort of rests on. So it can swivel, rotate side to side, but then you've got this secondary plate that his head sort of peeking up through that allows for bobble side to side and then forward and backward movement, which looks really, really good. Like he can look, you know, actually look down, which is usually kind of difficult for figures that essentially have no neck. So that's really nice. I'm pretty happy to see that. Arms, pretty normal. You've got some range out. They swivel at the shoulder. You've got your single jointed, about 90 degree elbow with swivel. You've got hinges, rotation at the wrist. He does have a waist twist. Mine was actually pretty stuck. I almost didn't realize that he had it at first. And I will say this, and I don't want to, you know, get hung up on what he is, you know, maybe similar to on the mythic side of things. He kind of has some similarities to Trolls in terms of what he can and can't do. A lot of his build and his design kind of seems reminiscent of a troll, but he's still his own thing. He's very much not a troll, but at the same time, it's probably the closest, the closest thing to him because some stuff is kind of similar. Legs on him can go out. Uh, they do kick forward and backwards slightly. Mine are kind of tight, but they don't do a whole lot. You do have a thigh twist up there. He doesn't have a knee. Well... Let's be honest, he does have a knee. He's got two of them, I guess. He's got, you know, sort of almost almost a digitigrade kind of build, but not exactly because he doesn't stand on his toes. But there's no articulation at the knee. So he's always going to be in this sort of squat pose. But he does have swivel right here. It's hidden really nicely. I didn't catch that at first either. And then you've got really, really nice rocker. I mean, you can like break that ankle. And then you've got your hinges. So he is pretty well articulated. He's probably more articulated than you might expect. And if you aren't sure what to look for, you might actually miss some of it, specifically if your waist is kind of stuck like mine was. And then whatever you would call this, this upper ankle articulation is pretty hidden uh, as well. But I think it's all about this head. What he can do in terms of, you know, being maybe not dynamic, maybe that's, that's not the best way to describe it, but add a little bit more character to him by being able to tilt that head or make him look up or look down rather than just being something that is ultimately static because he's really big like a troll is, this guy is capable 
of more impressive posing. And then as far as the overall look and feel on this guy, that's that's definitely the area where I think he, he excels. And I don't know that that's too far-fetched or something like this. It's still legions, right? But this guy is something else entirely. The focus is definitely not on articulation for Slog. There's a lot that he can't do, but he looks awesome. There's so, so, so much detail crammed into this figure in terms of just all this stuff jutting out of his torso. He's got the entire suit. You know, of course, you've got this super textured skin. There's a lot of emphasis in his bio on his suit in particular. Uh, he's very much kind of like played up sort of like Darth Vader where his suit is actually keeping him alive. And without it, he's going to die. Uh, so he is, he's covered in this suit. Of course, we've got the, you know, we've got the, the helmet, the actual dome aspect here. But there's so much detail in this. It's very worn. It's, you know, it's kind of gross. It looks lived in to some degree. You've got these removable canisters on his chest. It's so like these are separate pieces. You know, so if you want to put something else in there, I guess, custom-wise, you can do that. We've already seen one. If you're, if you're, you know, in the community, you've already seen a, you've already seen one by uh, Jeremy Gerard. He's already done a custom for this guy, which I still find nuts. But this is pretty cool. You've got those little little canisters that'll pop out. Maybe you know, like respirator canisters or something along those lines. You've got all these like pipes and valves. You've got you know all sorts of readouts and things like that all over him. You've even got just tons of detail on the back. He's essentially got you know like some sort of engine or something, some sort of energy device that's keeping the suit moving and functioning. So you've got you know like this exhaust port back here. Kind of got like a canister on his back, on his butt, like a, like a stormtrooper belt has, things like that. We've got the little ports that are kind of the telltale thing for Cosmic Legion. So all the figures, well, most if not all figures have these. Uh, that'll allow things to be pegged in. So you've got two of those. We'll talk about those a little bit more when we get to accessories. He, of course, wouldn't be complete without a tusk emblem tampoed there on his shoulder. And that looks really good. I do like the Tusk emblem. I like the, the actual faction symbols quite a bit for cosmic stuff. But really, it's it's just the size, the overall detail crammed into this figure, the color choices, the way he sort of clashes against himself. Because he does have this super, super bright green skin that's covered in a dry brushing. So you've got all of that nasty, craggy detail on the skin accentuated and highlighted by that paint. But of course the paint just, you know, breaks him up a little bit more as well. And then you've got your head sculpt up here, which looks just awesome. He's got this big blobby pancake-ish almost looking head, like sort of like gills slits something out of the side. You know, he's obviously uh, some very weird creature just at face value. He's got a very curmudgeonly expression. We've got one like almost Sith looking eye. And then you've got the other one that is pupilless and it's been disfigured. He's got a big scar that runs down the head. I really, really like the head sculpt. I like the eyes. I like the expression on this figure. And that scar gives him some asymmetry and just sort of breaks him up a little bit as well. But also, you know, I've already shown it. Uh, you've got the dome for this that has sort of a frosted look to it. It does, of course, obscure a very beautiful sculpt underneath there. But this completes the idea of him being sort of sealed in this suit because you can actually see where the rest of the body is sealed off, where it's like hermetically sealed at the biceps and down at the calves as well. So everything else is like a contained system. And then the, the, the glass dome or plastic dome here caps it all off and sort of locks him in place, almost like, you know, it's kind of like a prison in terms of what he's wearing. So this guy just looks awesome. There's, there's not much other way to say it. He is pouring with detail, pouring with sculpt, pouring with little bits and bobs and all sorts of, of little gadgetry and then tons of paint, tons of different colors, tons of textures, dry brushes, washes all over this guy just to bring him out. And he's also, of course, a big, chunky, hefty figure on top of that. And speaking of how big he is, let's of course do some size comparisons because it's hard to convey exactly how much of a figure this is. I can show how tall he is and I can show how wide he is. I can't really easily demonstrate without, you know, getting a scale out and showing how thick and heavy this thing is because weight is also a big factor in just how much presence this guy has. There's a lot of plastic here and it may not be obvious until you actually get him in hand. Um, so to start with, we do have our figure Obscura Monkey King here on the left for a, you know, a standard figure comparison. We've got an ogre scale figure here on the right. That's a custom head but it does make him a little bit a little bit taller. Slog is, you know, in between. He's super, super thick and beefy. So he, he's got a lot more width and depth than these two figures, but he's not the tallest thing on your shelf by any means. 
And let's move this guy aside. And let's do a Masterverse figure. There's Faker. And let's pull Sun Wukong aside. And let's do an uh, let's do Marvel Legends. There's Forge. For just a standard body size figure. So, of course, he looks super, super huge here by comparison. And let's move Faker aside. Let's do Animal Warriors Thane. This is a pretty good comparison because, you know, he's also a really, really wide figure. He's so wide, he's out of frame. And let's go another big figure. Here is, here is the Silverhawks Monstar from Super 7. And, I mean, he's, he's a league of his own. He's absolutely massive, but he gives a pretty good idea of how, how much width we're talking about. Both of these figures do. And then let's pull Monstar aside. And let's get Thane out of the way. And let's pull this big meatball over a bit. And let's do this. Because I know this is a comparison a lot of people want to see. I called him troll-like before, and that's not because he's really huge. It's mostly to do with his build and what he can and can't do. There's a lot of similarities in terms of how these guys move. It's not exact by any means. And then, of course, the trolls are still the biggest thing in Legion's you know, cosmic or mythic, but this gives you an idea of what he looks like. He's still a really, really big figure, but he's not troll big. He's not the same kind of figure. If he was this figure, still all of what he offers at this size, he'd be like $200. He'd be super, super expensive. Uh, there'd be no way they could do that for that price. So you're getting a really large figure, really beefy, really thick, really wide, really heavy, but again, not the tallest thing, certainly not the biggest thing in general on your shelf. Now, as far as accessories goes, this is probably the area where Slug is, let's say, less competitive than the rest of the figures in this wave. He, he really just doesn't have a lot. Uh, to start with, he does get an extra head sculpt. And, you know, honestly, this is the one thing I didn't expect to see with this figure at first glance because it's just a weird head. And it's, he's got, like, this really massive peg. It's not even a ball peg. It's just a peg that sticks straight up off the disc in there. And then the head lifts right off. It's actually pretty weird. Uh, but you do get this extra head with the screaming, mouth open, you know, more angry expression. So he's got a little bit more of a scowl going. You can see everything in that mouth. You can see his jagged teeth and some nastiness going on in there. You know, have him doing this if he's angry or barking orders at someone, something like that. This is probably my preferred head of the two. I just really like the expression here. And then we get a set, of course, a set is two. You get a set of fists. He comes with gripping hands on him in the box. You do get some fists. And then we also get his, it's not really a weapon per se. It's his little data pad. So, you know, he's like his little hand scanner or something. And it has a, a little readout on the screen for his body suit. Because that's kind of the whole thing here. A lot of the focus on his bio is his suit and how it's keeping him alive, you know, like Darth Vader style almost. So he gets this to monitor his suit. And it's pretty cool, actually. It's really big and chunky. It's got the tusk emblem on it, sculpted and painted on it. And then it's got this cable that can attach on his back. Uh, so he's got the ports, you know, the ports that are, that are pretty much seen throughout Cosmic Legions. He's got a couple back here, so you can have it go onto either side. And you get this little, uh, you just get this little cable. It's not bendy or anything like that, but it's very, very flexible. So it's not like it won't hold that shape, uh, but it'll sit nicely on there. And then you can have him hold it and he can watch himself exist. So he doesn't have a lot of stuff, nothing too crazy here, really. But I do like what we have. I really like this head sculpt. And as weird as this thing is, as weird as this is, I do really like this as an, as an accessory as well. So yeah, overall... I'm really glad I picked this guy to open first. I, I was always going to do it anyway. He was always going to be the one I opened first. But I'm really glad it was him. Sculpt is... The sculpt is where it's at. The sculpt is phenomenal. And I don't ever use that word ever. It's phenomenal. There is so, so much detail crammed into this guy. He is going to be a focal point on your shelf. Not just because of his size. But because of all the stuff sticking out of his chest. This bright green paint with all that crazy detail and wash in it. The big dome. All of this. Even his goofy scanner weapon is really cool to look at. There's a lot of interesting details within this figure. He moves well enough. He obviously has some size, and that's really important for this figure. He has some bulk. He has some weight, for sure. So he is going to have a presence among the other cosmic figures. And if anything, it's just an indication that ultimately the weight 
has been worth it, and I am so, so happy to see these figures in person. So that's going to do it for this look at the Four Horsemen Cosmic Legions High Warden Slog. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.